two testimonies already. Sister Karo Bara King. Now we'll be going to Baraka. Baraka, please feel free to let us know how your journey, your journey of faith, how the Lord God has rescued you and the things that you want to share with the brethren, particularly that which the Almighty God Himself is putting in your heart, so that someone out there can be set free. Please go ahead, Baraka. All right. Praise the Lord. So um I'm following from uh Sister Carol's testimony to start from this place uh in my own testimony as well. So my dad used to be a pastor, he's of he's of blessed memory now. He used to be a pastor of a church called New Covenant Ministries in Ijibo. The church was uh on a few acres, the property was on a few acres, and the building was maybe about a 2,000, 3,000 capacity auditorium, you know, and at the time, the church had about between 500 and 600 members. And, you know, this is, the, this is what he was doing uh, in terms of ministry. So, because, you know, he was, um, my dad was very close with uh, people like Pastor Adebui, Pastor Komui, they they make they were they were very close. I won't say very close, but they were close. They had a personal relationship. So he used to go to redemption camp a lot. Uh and you know, in fact we had a, a place that we had rented that was for the family. Whenever we'd go for Holy Ghost night or we go for any any program, you know, we have a place to stay. So I remember one of those times that my dad went to a uh, Holy Ghost convention, they used to have it in the zone. They used to have like different groups who come, maybe because of the crowd. So they'll have zone A and zone B. And so on one of those times that my dad traveled, you know, my, my younger sister, she went into daddy's room. Her daddy is not around and she slept. When she woke up, she just was scribbling with a pen. And she wrote on the wall, Daddy has gone to zone B. So, I mean, she didn't even think about anything. She didn't think anything about it. She just wrote and she left the room. About maybe two or three days later, my dad returned. And we just saw that he came back, like, came back Saturday night. Sunday, he was out again. He's going out. He was so agitated. We were still young. We didn't really understand. But I really looked up to my dad. My dad was not was not very educated. Uh, he's had primary six education and uh, primary school education, and you know. So I believe that to an extent, it hampered his ability to understand some things in the gospel. But anyways, he rushed out, and what I'm now what I now know came many years later. About later after this incident. So what happened is that he had been invited to a mountain of fire uh, some time earlier, and he enjoyed the message. And you know, he felt that you know they are dealing with uh, fetish, uh, fetish powers. My dad's dad, his my dad's my grandfather died by food poisoning, and some family members died by, from what we were told that the meat they ate, it was, it was appearing on the plate as meat. But in reality, it was human finger. So my dad always had this fear about, you know, fetish. We, were, we, we, found we never ate food anywhere. If it was not a restaurant or anything at home. And I remember we ate one time in his assistant pastor's house. His, his own assistant pastor's house. Till date, is the that's the, the beating that my dad gave all of us. We all remember that beating. It's the, the time he has beat us the most. He beat us from about 10 p.m. that night till about 3 a.m. Because of that fear of, you know, food poisoning. So it really resonated with him, the message that he had. And he came back with it, you know, said we're going to start going there. We're going to start. So I got to meet... Uh, uh, Dr. Lukoya, you know, he said, these are my children, this is my wife. When they met my my mom, my mom is from India, my mom is an Indian. 
So that's that even comes later. So my dad now rushed out and went to straight to Mount to Yaba to talk to the pastors that this is bad. That somebody wrote daddy has gone to zone B and he knows his children can never enter his room to write that thing. So who wrote this thing? So he was now giving the interpretation that this is a divine handwriting. The same way the writing on the wall in the book of Daniel, that this is a handwriting from God, that uh, there is a portion in hell called zombie, and it is for people that are in ministry that have failed to give, they give some very wild interpretation. And so because of that, my dad stopped ministry. He just came to the church and said, you know what, um, the church is not going to continue. He's sorry, this and this and this. Uh, like play, like play, the, he went to, started, started living in, uh, in Yaba, going undergoing prayers, 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 until this man that is a Christian, that was a pastor, actually imbibe the spirit that will, something will be moving about in his body. You will see the thing moving on his stomach. You see the thing moving all over his stomach. Like, like this, the, the body will be raised. You know, it's like there was maybe an animal or something moving inside the stomach. All coming from that place. My mom... Braka, Braka, did he cut you? I experienced that too. An object was oh. moving in my body for so many years. Hmm. So, my dad, all of a sudden, he, he became paranoid. Unfortunately, so he, he, he would go for prayers. But when they met, they got to know that my mother is from India. Ah, they told him that my mom is actually uh, um, from the Indian Ocean. It's actually uh, this, and uh, they told him all sorts of things. Unfortunately, my dad believed. In the year 2000, my dad locked us out of the house. That's me, my elder sister, and my mom. And he's taking the three younger ones. In the year 2000, that happened, and the family split up. My mom would go to, to Lukoya's house. You need to talk to my husband. You need to tell him that none of this is true. None of this is true. You need to tell him. You know, and you know, there was no such... This thing continued, continued, continued. My dad would become apprehensive. You say there's, a, there's, there's, a, there's somebody looking at me on the ceiling. You say there's somebody... Uh, uh, I'm hearing this song. There's some, something under my bed. You know, so so fearful, so fearful. You know, so I used to ask my dad, I say, Daddy, you taught us about prayer. You taught us about this. You taught us about that. Where where is the where, how why how come you cannot pray? He said, hmm, you are just a child. You don't know hey, that uh, you know, It's not he. You know, he had us. My dad would make us repeat how so wickedness uh, fall down and die. Every kiniko, kiniko. I mean, for a long time, all of us in the house, what we, the atmosphere was negative, it was evil, it was rough. All because of this particular focus. When, and I remember I sat down in, in Dr. Lucas' office one day. And he was telling my mom, trying to advise my mom, my mom to come for prayers and this and that. It was, uh, I think it was 2001, January, the first week of January. We had just done crossover service. We prayed 670 prayers in that crossover service. 600. it and they shared it. I'm sure my, my uh, sister Carol, you understand what I'm talking about. Brother, the, I was there. I understand perfectly everything you're saying. I was so there I said, for 70 years. So I said to 
Dr. Lukoy, I was sitting on the couch with, just beside him. I said, from what I understand about Christianity, spirits do not die. So how do you pray that this house of wickedness is to fall down and die? Can you explain it to me? He mumbled and fumbled and said one or two things. I was, it still did not make sense to me. You know, because it was not logical that his spirit would die. I, I didn't know anything at that time. You know, I was still growing. I asked him a second question. I said, um, why, uh, if, you, if you keep teaching people to pray, do you not think they are going to be praying about the people that have offended them? Then how are you going to rescue them from all these generational causes, household wickednesses? Is it not the word of God? I asked him these three questions. And, you know, he said, yes, that's why they come. So that, you know, there's some, you know, said there's some people that they're at a particular level and uh, they need this thing first before you can start preaching. That they need them, to, they need to get into deliverance and removal of generational cause. And, uh, uh, well, I said, this one is a pastor, but it still did not make a lot of meaning to me. Anyways, before we knew what was going on, they had convinced my dad to sign over the property that was in each book to him, to the church. Uh, my mom, so without my mom knowing, they signed. Oh, we not just came one day and saw that they had erected MFM uh, billboard in front of the property. So my mom ran straight back to him. Are you trying to take our property? He said, uh, these are some of the, so I explained this one kind, you know, that uh, these are some of the things that uh, you have to do to redeem. He said, said some things, you know, and my mom did not really understand the Yoruba that they spoke. So anyways, that place that they are now in Ijibo, that is where my dad's church used to be. My dad had a stroke two years before he died. And that was the stroke that God used to save him. Because all of a sudden, he no longer, we were not able to say all those people from uh, MFM that come and sit in the house and they are paid to pray. You know, they, are, they, they, they literally just pay them, they cook food, they give them everything. And then they tell you what the price is. And they are, they are housed. In, they, 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 so the house that my, my dad chased my, uh, me and my mom from, the whole downstairs was converted to their quarters. And they were living there, they were praying there. You know, and you go there, the atmosphere is always thick, negative. Always. My mom, we could, whenever we want to have any talk or resolution, it was until we started having that conversation outside of that house. And so, it, at that time, it affected me because I started to feel like, ah, these pastors cannot be wrong now. How can the pastor, the pastor is saying this? But then, I would have been questioning at that point, like, this thing is not also, it's not also making sense. Anyways, to cut a long story short, we, we restricted my dad. In fact, when, when, when he had the stroke, at the point, we didn't tell anybody where he was. My mom, and that was how, after 14 years, my mom and my dad's marriage was restored. After 14 years, because we, all the voices that we had been hearing, and that's when I actually sat him down and I taught him the gospel. I told him everything he had taught me when I was, when I was small. I started to tell him again, he was like a baby learning afresh about the finished work of Christ, about forgiveness, about redemption about how the blood of Jesus Christ has been shed, you know, and I told him about the, the works of the devil and all of those, and he was learning all those things afresh, you know, his whole body, mind, everything had been taken over by this ideology. That was the, my first major introduction to them. The second introduction I had to uh, Dr. Lukoya, one of my friends is in charge of, or was in charge of their IT and social media. And the day he told me how they run that place like a business. Well, I makes about four billion naira a year from the sale of books. Just power must change hands. How much they make. It's a it's an enterprise. It's just that when he comes to church, he puts on game face. This is 
church, you know, and he says all the things he needs to say. But within all of them know that this is about Paul. It, the guy was telling me that it's probably richer than Oedipo, but nobody knows because it is it keeps a low profile, you know. So again, this this struck me like, is this one part of Christianity? Is this how Christianity is? You know, and it it actually spoiled my mind for a long time. You know, I was so bitter. I was bitter against the church. You know, because I've seen them. They came into my home and they just destroyed everything that was peaceful. It was only the last two years of my dad's life, you know, that the home began semblance of normalcy. You know, my sister, my eldest, my younger sister, the one that uh, that wrote to zombie on his wall, that one got pregnant twice because my dad was outside the house. She got married to a guy who was abusing her because my dad was outside the house. So there were so many implications of the interaction that we had my family had with that ministry and i'm not it's not just a one of i know um, the experience that other people have also shared just like you know uh, sister carol but in terms of in terms of my own journey that was just a part of it you, you know i started to now because i was very dissatisfied with everything I've had, my uh, Pastor Kumi married my parents, so I there was no. I mean, I got to know all those things, and we were very legalistic in my home. Very, very legalistic. We 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 didn't have TV until we were in SS two, and we had to wait until my dad had travelled to the mountain before uh, my mom just went to one of these uh, house of people that sell second hand and quickly bought one TV and came to the house. Because if we had bought the TV when my dad was, it would have been bad, you know. And 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 so I I started questioning like, is this Christianity? I will ask questions. How, how, what exactly is this thing about? Is this so spooky? Is this so scary? And you know, a lot of people also because they were regurgitating what they were taught, you know, they 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 also did not have the right answers for me. But I want to, I just, I just thank God because I didn't give up searching. Give up searching. I, if I tell you that I've been to virtually, virtually every church in Lagos, I've been to Redeemed, uh, First Square, Catholic Church, I've been to Sell, I've been to all those churches because I'll go to this place, I'll ask questions. They didn't have the answer. I'll go to this other place, I'll ask questions. Some of them will say, I'm too young to be asking this church, I should go and sit down one place. You know, because they didn't have the answers. I said, okay, if you say Jesus Christ has paid up the price. And I'll ask, you know, so many of these questions. And because doctrinally they were very weak, they didn't have the answers. So I was I was dissatisfied. It was when I was um, about 17, I got introduced by a Christian in, in Mountain of Fire. Uh, the mom, uh, the, the guy used to be my friend, the mom, said they, they shared the, the handout in her in the uh, their self fellowship you know where they go that uh, that handout was called akashic records the akashic records are um, a record from buddhism about the life of jesus christ that is not recorded in the bible and in the akashic records they talk about how jesus went to meet with buddha um and buddha laid hands on jesus you know that between that period of when he was 12 and 30 they wanted to give us more details that jesus christ when the bible talks about he was anointed with the holy spirit that he had actually uh gone gone to meet uh get anointing from buddhism and this was uh, distributed to her from the mfm self fellowship they were the they had read it and they had distributed it to all the the guy brought it to me and said i should come and learn that i've not learned this part about jesus and i had to look at him and i say where what part of this have that if it if it does not align with what the bible says it cannot the guy was so convinced that i'm too i'm too uh, my mind is too narrow i'm too this i'm too that how can i say that 
I know uh, it's me that knows everything. Do I know the people that gave his mom that the people that gave his mom they are they have, they have been in ministry longer? And when I look at that, I had to sit him down. He's he's one of my best friends now. I had to sit him down, I had to tell him, show him from scriptures how you cannot go to extra biblical sources that do not agree with what is written as a basis to understand what. But these things were distributed each from a church. So when I saw what uh, Daddy wrote, uh, Daddy taught in that video, I knew that, in fact, he's scratching the surface. There are, there are very strong esoteric practices. If I, if I will continue on, on the story I was, I'm saying on my own journey. So I, I went to deeper life. I believe I wasn't satisfied. I went to uh, all the churches. The only church I had not been to then was Living Faith. They still have gone. Hands on the Rock have gone. When I went to Covenant University, I was introduced to Living Faith. In fact, the first day that I entered the Canaan land, the Covenant University building, uh, Bishop Oedipo was coming out of the building and he's the one that welcomed me. Oh, you're welcome. How are you? What are you here for? What course are you studying? And you know, I it was the first person I met, and I was so excited. Oh, I'm meeting you. We're talking about, and I remember everything that they taught in that in, in while I was there. You know, he used to come every week to teach, teach the students, and I used to. This is not adding up. This is not adding up. You know, he would talk. And then I, I would sometimes I would go to the chaplain. Pastor Macaulay was chaplain then, so he knew me in school. I had to start a fellowship in school. And of course, they taught me that you cannot have uh, any fellowship that is not uh, in, that is not part of the commission. You know, I say it's not a church. I just my classmates that are meeting. We disguised it. But everything they taught, I remember asking. I said, when are we going to talk about Jesus? When are we going to everything it is the uh, discovery, the road to recovery? Uh, uh, all sorts of funny, funny, you know. I, I said, I used to ask these questions. And I said, what, at what point is this church going to actually talk about anything that's related to Christianity? I was so hungry for the truth. And unfortunately, I wasn't getting it. I wasn't getting it. I wasn't getting it. But what God did for me is that the church where I got saved was a church that was a Bible-believing and Bible-teaching church. It's a small church. It's a family church. And that's still today. That's the church I go to in Abuja here, the Abuja uh, chapter. And, you know, I became, you know, by God's grace, I, be, I, I was just very hungry. Everywhere I have gone outside of the Brethren Fellowship, even, even in the Brethren Fellowship, because they, they are more legalistic, but at least they are not on the other side of, uh, of Word of Faith and all of that, but Everywhere I have gone, I've always been the odd one out. Always. I've always, when I study the Bible, I don't see what everybody sees. The blood of Jesus Christ, I've never seen where they pleaded it. This is, I mean, me still growing up. So I will ask questions. Where, where do you guys plead the blood? Why? They say, that's the way it's done. That's the way it's done. I should not question. In fact, in, I asked question in church. They outlawed it that any question on the blood should never be asked. And we should just accept it. If, if you accept, if you ask that question, you will communicate the person and sort of, you know, I would, I would, I would read the scriptures. I will say, okay, where do people get this understanding about tithing? Where do people get, I don't, so I always was the odd one out until Pastor Macaulay sent a, a you know, sent a notification of FOF. When I saw FOF, I said, friends of FOF again, at least I've been a Christian for a while. So, what is fundamentals of faith again? The Holy Spirit said, go, that's the one you must go for. So, I made it a point of duty. At some point, I stopped going to the church because if I go to church, I wasn't edified. I was just feeling, you know, so, like, you know, like you went to a restaurant to eat and you didn't get food. You know, they, they, just, they just sent you two plantain chips and said you should be going. You know, because I was never, you know, satisfied until... I met FOF. When I met FOF, I first said, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. What's going on? You mean that there are actually people that believe 
some of these things that I've been they have been believing for a while, you know, and it just gave me confidence because earlier David had told me, "Don't worry, I have seven thousand other prophets, and they will show." So I, I when I met FOF, I said, "Wow, God has honored His word," and for me, it was it was a blessing because I was suddenly able to corroborate that it's not just me because. It has been the case, even uh, Paul was saying that earlier today, it has been the case. Whenever I say something, it just goes against the way. It's not, it's not as if I'm trying to be controversial. or I, It just changes. Like, everybody just, I will come, I'll talk about worship. They will say, no, 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 that's not what worship is. And, and they will start fighting. They will start fighting. So in point, I say, okay, I won't share again. I will keep quiet. But then when I met FOF, you know, I I thank God. I thank God because God kept, you know, the ministers in FOF true, true to the word, true to their calling, and they were obedient, you know. And because of that, you know, we are able to actually grow in the knowledge of God's truth. So um I think I don't know, in summary, that's 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 uh, my my experience. Uh, thank you so much. Thank yes, you so much. Um, we we soon close, so I will just I will just say, uh, uh, me and uh, Brashola, we have done several chats program, but I think the about some few weeks ago, we look at something, and this is one thing I need every one of you to understand that every of those four teachers, what they do is that they attack. Both the word of God, by both the word of God, which Christ is the word of God, that's what they attack. And they what they want to do is they give you as eye sounding nonsense so that you can put the word of God and Jesus apart. That's why you are not hearing it from them. That's where you are hearing the enemy of your household. That's why you are hearing all those nonsense. Because mm -hmm. But I did is I I remember your exact words. You you said I watched that on YouTube and you said you cannot be a false prophet and not bow bad mouth the name of God. <laughs> <laughs> I want <watched> that. <laughs> okay, all right. Thank you so much for that. But you see, that's the most important thing. In between, between, we were just talking. It's not because we did a program, it's not a program. We were just talking. You need to backmark the word of God and Christ. And that's exactly what they have done. And there's another thing that uh, my brother here, Brashola, always quotes that. The word of God is very simple. If the Bible says to Timothy that from childhood you have, all, you have known the Holy Scripture, I mean, that shows to you that there's no deep secrets or something, something that you cannot uh, unfold. Fold. Uh, okay, I will ask, before we close, I will ask uh, Brashola to speak. Brashola? Are you with us? Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm with you. Sure, I am. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, but can you, you hear me? Be, we can hear you. We can hear you. Oh, okay. Oh. oh. Uh, it, it, the thing just uh, cut off. Uh, I don't know. It's no more on the thing. And uh, I would, would have wished him to say something as well because uh, all these things all these things that we have spoken to about today we are still going to come out with some biblical uh, biblical proof that all these things that our brothers and sisters have spoken about they are actually the right thing and god is the one that intervened that is bringing them uh to the light of this you see it is very important that anyone anyone that may may have opportunity that God has mercy upon, let me put it this way, anyone that received the mercy of God to listen to these things, uh, it means 
God is ready, uh, uh, is do, doing something to bring them out. And that is a lot of mercy, a lot of mercy, a lot of uh, privilege for you to have come across this. And uh, uh, we believe that it's God that is speaking. Just like uh, bro uh, Brother Carl said, that he didn't know that really God was uh, preserving the 7,000. This is exactly what most people feel. This When you find out the truth, when you find out, because usually, because you have received the truth, the truth, you may not be able to pinpoint what the problem is. You may not. Mm -hmm. But when you see the truth, when you understand the truth, really, you will know that, oh, that is the truth. And this is the most important thing. Very, very great, most important thing. Uh, and I, my prayer, okay, my prayer is that uh, 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 anyone who come across this uh, particular thing will be able to, uh, 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 God has mercy on him, on that fellow. 